All right. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for being patient. Hi, and welcome to Deciphering Your Body's Clues So You Can Heal. I'm starting a couple minutes early today, kind of by accident. Um, <laughs> I will get this live stream stuff down. I, um, so I'm so happy to have you here today. If you are watching on live stream, feel free to jump in and uh, feel free to pop into the Zoom meeting. You can do so anonymously. I know that with like health issues, obviously sometimes we don't want to have our uh, name associated with something we're asking about, especially if it's in a sensitive nature and that's fine. So if you want to do that, it is under the information. It's under this video. Um, there's a link there to join the Zoom. So I'm so happy to have you here today. This show is all about helping you to be able to understand, understand the root cause and the messages behind any pain or disease that you're dealing with. I specialize and have been doing for about um, probably about 15 years now um, in translating those messages. I can usually translate them in about a minute um, from you telling me exactly what's going on. And from there, we basically can uh, assess how that connects your mind, body, and life, and be able to get to that underlying level and shift. So it's usually a pretty fast process. I absolutely love doing this. My favorite thing to do is sort of on the spot. So if you are in the actual live, you're, you're in the Zoom, and you do have a question you'd like me to answer, you can raise your hand. So that's at the bottom of the screen, and there's a little thing down there that like looks like raising the hand. In fact, I think I see somebody maybe. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> I can see uh, I've got uh, someone I know very well on there. So hi, somewhat. Hi. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, it's okay if your video is not, not up. Um, okay, so let's get going. So today I'm going to focus in on pain is one of the things I want to talk about a whole bunch. Um, because pain, honestly, as awful as it is, and as much as we don't really want to be dealing with pain in our lives, it is one of the most literal things to be able to translate. So I'd like to give you a lot of different ways and the different kinds of pain that we experience, and then give you the translations that I most often see for that pain. What you can do with that information, and we'll connect it together as we talk a little bit in this particular episode, but we're going to, um, well, what you can do with that once you've got it translated is you can actually think to yourself about how that might apply to how you're feeling right now, um, how things are going in your life, perhaps issues you're having with a male or a female in your life. And if you did miss the first episode, which was a couple of weeks ago, I did go into deep detail on how I actually translate sort of the body language translation process that I developed. And it is a seven step process. I do teach it in my course, body language, decipher your clues so you can heal. Um, and you can find out more information about that at the end of this. Um, you can also just go to my website at tarameyerrobson.com and look, then you'll see across the top body language. So I teach the seven step process and it's, it's basically when I do this, um, I do it sort of all seven steps in once when I teach you how to do it, I just teach you the seven steps. Um, so that, you know, piece by piece, so you can kind of put those pieces of the puzzle together yourself. So one of the things I'd like to, let me double check and see if there's any, okay. Um, as I said, if you have a question you'd like to ask me live, hop into the Zoom and you can raise your hand and I'd be happy to translate for you right here on the spot. So one of the first things I wanted to do that I've been doing a ton lately is I am sort of doing an inspiration of the day. So I'm doing that with, um, this is actually my book. You can, if you're interested, you can definitely grab it on Amazon um, or Barnes and Noble and those kinds of places. What I've been doing is a little inspiration of the day just to see what, what kind of inspiration maybe would be right for those that are here and those that are here on the, on the, the live cast as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I just kind of am doing this. Let's see here. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Okay, so the um, inspiration of the day is to be compassionate with yourself too. You're human and you deserve as much understanding and love as you would give to others. The more compassion you show to yourself, the more energy you're able to give everyone else in your life. And keep in mind, it's your right to feel life fully. It's your right to have the best emotions of life flowing through your daily existence, tuning you into more fantastic experiences. Open your heart and you will open yourself to the life of your dreams. So that's actually in station four, which is all about our emotional connection. And if you have some underlying beliefs, which again can be tied into the pain and disease that are popping up for you, especially if it's in your heart, your 
your shoulders, your hands, then that does always tie back to emotions. So hopefully for some of you out there, certainly speaks to me um, because I think, I think for a lot of us, we may be the most compassionate people and the caring, most caring people to everyone else in our lives forget ourselves sometimes. So um, that's my message for you today is to be compassionate with yourself as well, to offer the love that you offered everyone else to yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in to talking about pain. So how do we, how does pain show up in the body? Why does it show up in the ways that it shows up? So pain shows up in the body. It's usually whenever I see pain or disease, it has come after a period of you having um, some, it can be very quick in terms of like a trauma, that kind of thing, something like a very traumatic thing, obviously an accident, an injury can bring on an immediate, uh, immediate issues with pain and disease. Um, but it also can be something that's been a more longstanding thing. Perhaps you've had a pattern of really difficult relationships over and over and over again in your life. So what your body, um, your body really wants you to thrive. Your mind really wants you to thrive. Even if it seems like that's not the case because you keep picking bad patterns or, or negative experiences, um, your, your mind and your body really do want you to thrive. And so what's really happening is that at a deep level, you have some unconscious beliefs that maybe from a really long time ago, from, you know, authority figures in your life, from, um, you know, parents and teachers and religious figures or whoever else might have been an authority figure, big sisters, big brothers. I get those a lot <laughs> that have put in some interesting beliefs in your, in your mind. Um, and those may have been tuned in for a really long time, right? And because of that, what's ending up happening is, is it's a lot like, you know, when you, when you hit your remote control and you're turning from different station to station, if your remote control is programmed to tune into something like um, the insane relationship channel, because of these beliefs that you have, they're just programmed in. It's like you keep hitting that button and you keep getting the same belief or same negative relationships again and again, right? And it, it's, you might want to watch a different channel. You might want to have a lovely, loving relationship, but if you don't fix that underlying frequency that's attached to that button or in your mind, basically, uh, it doesn't shift. And so that's why you keep having these problems. So what happens is because unfortunately we weren't really taught that when we come in, what happens is over the course of a period of time, your mind is like, okay, we're not shifting this belief. This is not, this is not helpful. And it tunes your frequency into more negative and problematic issues in your, in your body. And that shows up as pain and disease. And that pain and disease is usually a very literal translation of your mind's way of trying to tell you what's going on and get you to shift this underlying belief that's causing you the problem. So I see it all the time, literally all the time. I have seen it for as long as I've been doing this work and probably before that, <laughs> because I was always a pattern seeker and kind of noticed those things. Um, and it just happens all the time. This is the way it happens. So I want to emphasize it is not your fault if you are dealing with these things. These are unconscious. We are not given this information when we come in. But now I'm here to hopefully help teach you to bring awareness to it and to be able to shift that so that instead of going all the way to pain and disease, you can actually shift the underlying frequency in the problem frequency before any of those things manifest and hopefully help yourself from having the pain and disease show up in the first place. So um, actually, if you're interested in translating and pinpointing the underlying beliefs and translating them before they come an issue, there's a really extensive test in here that um, tells you in exactly which of seven areas of your mind, body, and life you have these underlying beliefs. And then it takes you to exactly the area where you actually need to be able to shift it. And it shows you how to shift it in a completely customized way to you. So without further ado, let's talk about pain, pain showing up in your body. Now, pain can be one of the most annoying, debilitating things, depending where it is in your body. It tells you a whole lot about what's going on, what's off in your mind, body, and life. What I want to look at today is simply um, what is the the specific translation of different pains. So let's just jump in and take a quick look. So I get a lot of people that'll have a stabbing pain. You know, it's like that, that it feels literally like somebody's stabbing them. I oftentimes feel like people don't really even need me to translate that one, but I'm going to anyways. Um, so if you think about it, if something was stabbing at you, what is that probably telling you is going on in your life? 
Um, and for anybody who's here, you can take a guess too. Um, so um, stabbing, the image I get every time I deal with somebody with stabbing. So I tend to be really visual when I'm working with people and I get oftentimes a really specific image. And on stabbing, I get it every time. And it's that image of that shower scene in that movie Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock, which is a very old movie at this point, but um, still a classic. And it's that image of like this poor woman's in the, in the shower and there's like this creepy attacker on the other side of the shower. And it's like, they have that sound. Eat, 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 eat. <laughs> and so I think we all associate that now with like super creepy um, horror mystery movie. Um, but also it really means that literally you are being attacked. You are being attacked by someone in your life. And we can talk about, I'm going to actually, I think I've got a couple examples of some people who sent in some questions for me that I translated um, about that. But what you're looking at immediately is if you have a stabbing pain, you're going to want to be looking at where are you feeling like you're being attacked in your life? And literally it's like that kind of thing, right? It's like someone is hitting you. I had somebody I worked with a couple of years ago um, and she kept having this really awful stabbing pain and it was right under her right shoulder blade. So in that particular case, whenever I'm looking at, um, I'm just going to go ahead and go into this. Um, <laughs> whenever I'm looking at a shoulder blade, if you think about the sort of job of a shoulder blade, the job is in many ways kind of, it looks like armor on the back. So if any of you um, happen to like sort of the knights, you know, of the round table or like the medieval stuff. My husband loves that stuff. It, it creeps me out in the museum. However, I do appreciate the beauty of the armor, um, but energetically it just creeps me out. But my husband loves like the, the armor. And if you think about the way that they had it, they always had this sort of like armor over the back, right? Like this, these like shoulder blade things. So whenever you're dealing with something that's going on with your shoulder blades, you know, you're kind of immediately uh, thinking that there's something going on where you're feeling very unprotected and that your armor is being sort of um, infiltrated as it were. So in this particular case, this poor woman was having this really bad stabbing pain and it was like under her shoulder blade. So now let's think about that metaphorically. If the shoulder blade is like the armor or your protection, then if somebody is getting a stabbing, is like there's a stabbing under your shoulder blade, to me, that immediately brings up an image of like the old dragon things where there's a chink in the armor or there's a chink in the armor, I guess, of the uh, uh, chink in the scales or chink in the armor of the knight uh, the, that's fighting. And so they're finding your weak spot and they're literally trying to kind of like, they're really trying to attack you at a very uh, deep manner or aggressive manner or a very harming manner. And in her case, it was on the right side. So because of that, I knew that this was probably a man in her life. And in fact, it was, she was in a, a toxic relationship and that guy was basically constantly kind of, you know, stabbing at her emotionally all the time, verbally and emotionally all the time. So that's where the body can be so literal with pain. And it will tell you like where it is in the body is going to tell you exactly what's going on. Um, and for those of you who missed the first episode, as I said, I did go into all seven steps and kind of pulled them together for you. So you're welcome to go back to that episode. Uh, you can grab it right now on YouTube or on my Facebook page, uh, or it will be uploaded to um, like iTunes and all the other podcast things uh, probably in the next week. I guess we have to have like five or eight episodes before I upload. Um, okay. So the next pain I want to take a look at is an aching pain. Okay. So ache. So a lot of times what's really neat about, and I realize pain and disease is not neat, but it is fascinating <laughs> the way it shows up. So what's really fascinating about the way that, um, an, like a pain in general or anything that shows up in our body is oftentimes we will use words in our day-to-day -day life that tell us if we pay attention to them, if we bring awareness to them, it's telling us what's going on. So if you say that you're aching for something or you feel, you know, there's an, oh, there's an aching in my soul. There's an aching in my heart. You know, what does that immediately tell you about the kind of pain an ache might be, or that translation of what an aching pain is. So right off, right. It's heartbreak. It's an aching wound. It's a need. It's almost always though, literally like heartbreak, that ache. Something is deeply wounding you at a, at a level that is like as visceral. It's breaking your heart. Okay. So whenever you're seeing like an ache, I want you to take a look at that immediately bring to your mind. 
okay, what am I heartbroken about? What is breaking my heart? I see a lot of, I've seen, I've seen a lot of heart. I've seen a lot of aching pain. Um, but I, I see a lot, you know, a lot of what happens can be things from sons or daughters that are, you know, leaving home or making choices that the parent doesn't like or um, going through the teenage years. I've only got a five year old. So, oh, goodness, she's going on 16. So we'll see. Um, but <laughs> all of those things, I see a lot of those. And obviously, aching pain can come up during things like a breakup. They can certainly come up during things like a loss of life, uh, during a period where you're grieving deeply. So um, those are all things that, that can bring up that heartache type thing. So if you've got an ache in your body, I want you to really ask, what are you heartbroken about? What emotions right now are really, you know, that kind of sense of deep heartbreaking, aching loss? Okay, um, so that's an ache. Uh, pounding. I get lots of people with pounding headaches, but also there can be, you know, pounding, pounding pain in all different kinds of areas of your body. So in this particular case, um, pounding for me is the Im image I get every time I get somebody has a pounding pain is like somebody knocking their head into the wall over and over again, right? It's that like pound, you're pounding your head. And the, the thing is, again, isn't that an interesting one? Because it's another one that we oftentimes will say, oh, I feel like I'm pounding my head into the wall, right? <laughs> and then what does that mean? It means you're frustrated. It means, ah, oh, you're trying to do something. You're trying to get somewhere. You're trying to help somebody who's not listening to you. You're trying to, um, you know, there, there's a there's a frustration. You feel like you're doing something, doing something, doing something, and not getting anywhere, or somebody's not listening to you. Um, I get a lot of people who say something like, "Oh, I'm just pounding my head into the wall because this, she she just won't hear what I'm saying." Okay, and so those, especially if it's a pounding headache, then what you're probably having so. You know, if it's that kind of a headache that's sort of around your head or even a migraine, what you're looking at there is that you are probably this area of the, of the mind is really where you uh, problem solve. And it's also that area where you have intuition and, and we all have intuition, some of us stronger than others. Um, but we all are born with an intuition. It's just, it's very much a, a, a biological thing we are born with. So um, if you're not listening, if you're a very intuitive person and you're not listening to your intuition, you can get a pounding headache because you're sort of like blocking the flow of problem solving and intuitive guidance and you're kind of pushing against it. Or again, if you have somebody outside yourself that you're trying to help them solve their problem and they're just not listening to you, um, then there's a pounding um, like there's just a pounding, then you're, it's like you're pounding your head into the wall, basically. Now, pounding pain can, again, show up anywhere in your body, and it means different things depending on where it shows up in the body. For instance, if you have a pounding pain in your foot, you're probably dealing with a situation in your family and in, in the, in like your nuclear family or your extended family, where you're feeling like you're maybe, a lot of times it could be something like um, you're, family, two sides of the family, or the family is breaking apart. There's not a good foundation there. And you're trying to solve it. You're, you're a helper and you're trying to get two people to figure something out in your family and they're not listening. You can get a pounding pain in your foot from that. So that foot area tends to be like family support, um, the rootedness, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it, it can be different, you know, pounding pain, um, a pounding pain in your shoulder could be that you feel like not only are you frustrated with dealing, but you're frustrated because you're supporting something too much. There's a burden on you. Okay. Shoulders are definitely where the burdens tend to show up. So that is a, a pounding, a pounding pain. So if you have pounding pain, that's what you're looking at is kind of like literally pounding your head into the wall. Um, a throbbing pain. So Throbbing pains are really interesting, right? It's like bing, 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 bing. So even as I do that, when you have a throbbing, think about if you have um, a throbbing light, you know, like a pulsing light, bing, bing, bing. So there's pulsing lights. A lot of times when you think about this metaphorically, and this is the image I always get when somebody has a throbbing pain. Um, let's say there's a, a fire in some building you're in, right? And what do the fire alarms, the lights do, right? And they make that boom, boom, boom sound, bing, bing, bing sound. You know, you can have like a, a throbbing beat 
But what that is, is always that it's trying to get your attention, right? It's like a warning signal. So if you have a throbbing pain, that is your mind and body's way of being like, pay attention, bing, bing, bing. This is a warning. This is a warning. Something is going down or this is a bad person for you to be with, or this is a bad situation for you to be in. So if you have a throbbing pain, I want you to ask yourself where in your life right now, do you feel like there is a real problem in terms of something that you need to really pay attention to because it's, it's, there's a warning there. You know, it could be a bad, a toxic work situation. It could be a toxic family situation. It could be a very difficult relationship. But if you have a throbbing pain, you are literally looking at your, your mind and your body are, are trying to warn you. There's a flashing red light <laughs> at you. Um, and again, depending on where that shows up in the body, that's going to tell you so much about what it actually is. Okay. Where it is, what, what the actual issue is now. Um, I just, I've just written down a bunch of them that I've, that I've dealt with lately or that I see a lot. So one is like a tingling pain. So almost like that, you know, that staticky tingling, um, type thing. So for me, whenever I see like that staticky or tingling pain, it's almost like if you imagine when you feel static electricity, that kind of like sense what it tends to be is it's your mind and body's way of sending you this constant little warning that your spidey senses, so to speak, um, need to pay attention to what's going on. So basically the tingling can come before the throbbing, or if you have a really bad situation going on, you may get a really throbbing pain. That's like a big warning. So um, the tingling is more like a gentle, hey, pay attention. I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of like nag you that there is something there. It also is usually associated with something that's quite irritating in your life. Because if you think about that, like tingling, going up and down, running up and down type of thing. And it also oftentimes can have to do with communication issues, communication breakdowns. Um, and why is that? Because the tingling pain oftentimes can be almost like a nerve type pain that's going up and down and your nervous system, your nerves are your literal communication conduits in your body. Everything goes from all of the, all of your cells and all, all different parts of your body, um, all the way to your brain. And that's your communication highway. So if you're looking at a tingling pain, I'd like you to look at, take a look at and ask yourself where in your um, body or in your life, do you think there's maybe communication breakdowns or where, are you supposed to be picking up on something that's going on um, that is that is needs your attention? That's a little bit of a warning, not like the throbbing, but a little bit of like, hey, pay attention, you know, type thing. A staticky, like, oof, what's going on? It's a charge. Um, so I, you know, I've dealt with like a, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I had somebody um, that I worked with, and she had this constant sort of like tingling pain, and it was always sort of going uh, this way on her hand, and it was her her left hand. It was particularly bad on her ring finger and she was married. Um, so this one was interesting because it was showing up on the, on the, the left side, uh, on, but on the ring finger, which told me again, the ring finger is associated with love, obviously. Um, and so, uh, because of that, it told me immediately that it was probably something to do with her husband even though it was on the left side. And so because it was on the left side, which tends to be more like a female in your life or, or yourself, if you're a female, I knew that probably what was going on was something that was something irritating her about maybe how she was able to communicate with her husband. And because it was showing up in the hand, um, the way that it was showing up, a lot of times our hands are really an expression, needless to say, of our emotions, but also kind of like trying to hold on, hold on to something, hold on to people. In her case, um, she felt like her husband wasn't being truthful about some, a whole bunch of things, but specifically her, um, some health issues that he was also going through. He wasn't telling her everything. And, um, and she was feeling like there was this breakdown in communication. And this was like a warning of like, yes, there is a breakdown in communication. It was really about how she was feeling as well. And that she needed more information. She needed him to hold her hand, so to speak, and to come together as a couple and deal with what he, the health issues, which were fairly serious that they were dealing with. She wanted to have that bond. Okay. So there was that warning there. All right, I'm going to try to keep this to a half an hour. Let me see. Is anybody raising their hand? Not right now. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, 
let's go to, let's go to, I'm going to skip blaring because blaring is really just a worse version of throbbing. It's like, it's like, ah, like that kind of thing. Um, it's a little too much. So let's go to, let's go to a, um, an interesting one. So what if instead of pain, it goes completely numb, something has gone numb in your body. So when something has gone numb in your body, it, you have something in your life has happened that is a shock to your system at such a level that the pain, if you experienced it, and I do mean just emotional pain at that point, but it can also be physical pain, um, is so awful. It would have been so awful to actually experience the pain fully that your body actually is shutting it down. So I see this a lot in someone who's had a very traumatic event happen in their life. Uh, that's, that's very emotional. They'll have something go numb. It could be legs going numb because they don't want to move forward or can't move forward. Or like they, they were knees going numb and they were like taken out of the knees by whatever this was. Um, it can show up in all kinds of different areas. I see a lot of people that have this happen to be highly empathic people. So highly, highly sensitive. And what's happened is they've, they've taken on too much for too long. And then there's like one event that happens. And if they had tried to process that whole event at once, it would be so overwhelmingly painful that they just, something went numb. Um, they went totally numb. So if you're dealing with numbness, I'd like you to ask where in your life um, was there something that was so either emotionally or can be physically. And usually those go hand in hand. If you've had a physical thing bad enough, then there's always going to be an emotional component as well. Um, where are you having something like that in your life or have you had in the last little bit that is so difficult, so profound that if you felt the full thing, the full pain of whatever happened, you went numb. Um, and so for all of these, just as I'm talking through them, just to kind of help you if you're watching on live stream as well, to get through the, um, you know, how do you work with this is I'd like you to, whenever any of these things are hitting home for you, if any of you're dealing with any of those kinds of pains, take time to write a, you know, journal about what's going on. You know, take that sort of root of what I've just told you and say, okay, I've got a stabbing pain. Where am I feeling attacked? And just allow yourself for any of you that are like, um, literature buffs or people that love, love literature, they're, um, uh, Virginia Woolf and, um, a few others started this started stream of consciousness writing where it just, it's like this, and every thought that has come through this character's mind has just sort of dumped out on the page. And, um, it's really, really interesting to read, but it's particularly helpful if you have any of these issues showing up to journal and instead of editing yourself, which is what we usually do of like, oh, I can't say that or I don't want to say that or whatever it is. Instead, just let whatever needs to come out, come out, just write it out. Okay. Where am I being attacked? And then boom, boom, boom. Just let it come out. My suggestion is if you do that, take a couple of days and walk away from whatever you've written and then come back. What happens is if you do that, it allows you to have a fresher perspective on what you've written down. And a lot of times you'll have kind of some aha moments that you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I was feeling attacked uh, by that. So that'd be my suggestion on how to work with that. If you, if some of this, um, I'll just do one more pain and then I'm going to actually um, take one that was sent in as a question for me. So how about a dull pain? You know, just like kind of like always present, always there, not debilitating, but enough that it's just bugging you all the time, dull pain. So when you have something like that, you want to take a look in your, look at your life and what has just been present in your life in a, for a really long time that is constantly causing you some level of pain, but that you've learned how to just kind of put up with it, but it's always there. And maybe you don't bring a lot of awareness to it. Maybe you don't, um, maybe you've shoved it off and, you know, I, I, I'm good at like packaging things up and throwing them back in my mental warehouse. So I don't have to think about them. Um, but unfortunately they come out one way or another. So in this case, it's probably something you kind of packaged up and put in the warehouse, like, Oh, it's fine. I can deal with it. But it's been with you for, for a long time. When you get that dull pain, that is your mind and body's way of telling you like this thing you're, you know, it's there. And I know you're kind of like used to dealing with it, but we're not letting you just kind of slide by it. You're going to have to take a look at it and we're just going to kind of keep making you uncomfortable until you do so. So that's what a dull pain um, tends to be. So if that's true for you, then I want you to please journal on that.
I'd love to hear if you do have any of these uh, pains or issues, please let me know, you know, let me know in the comments on the YouTube or the, or the Facebook. I absolutely love to hear from people. And, and how does this hit home? How does this translate for you? I'd love to hear about it. Um, okay, so I'm going to do really quickly um, a one that came in for me as a question. So I'm going to translate it real quick here on the spot. We've got about three minutes to go. Um, hi, Tara. I'm having a strange pain in my low back. When I turn to the right, I get a stabbing pain that is just above my hip. It's very intense. And then when I turn to my left, I'm fine. I've been told I've been to a doctor and they did some imaging and nothing is showing up. I've also been to a chiropractor and she just has been uh, adjusting that area. It helps a little and then it comes back. It's been going on for about six weeks now. Can you help me with what's going on? Thank you so much. Okay, so this is a great one. Um, first off, it's in her low back. So whenever I'm dealing with the low back, I'm usually looking at, that's the area that I call station two. It has to do with your one-on-one -on -one relationships, um, your individual relationships to another individual. Um, and that she says, she said she, it's bad. It's in her low back. So right off the bat, I'm saying that it's probably to do with a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Now we can have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we, we often think it's always romance and of course it's not, it can be a one-on-one -on -one relationship with anybody in our life. You know, we have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our mom. That's different to, from our dad, from our sister, from, uh, our boss or our coworker. It's all, you know, so any one-on-one -on -one relationship can show up here. Uh, when I turn to the right, I get a stabbing pain that's just above my hip. Okay, so uh, right off the bat, uh, something's going on that if she's turning to the right, so the right, it's probably, that's giving me a clue right there. It's probably a male in her life. And it's something about like, usually now think about the motion, right? If we're turning to the right, we're turning to like, maybe look at someone or metaphorically look at someone's perspective. Um, something about having to look at this person or look at their perspective is causing her a pain or a problem. And when we get another hint here, um, she said it's a stabbing pain. So what did we just talk about? So for those of you that are here live, you're welcome to put in the, in the chat, what is the stabbing pain? Okay, so stabbing is she's feeling attacked. Okay, so right off the bat, we know there's something about a one on relation one on relationship with a man in her life uh that is when she looks at him or when she tries to see his side she's feeling very attacked by him so um she also the pain is she said just above her hip so that's two for station what i call station two so when you're dealing with your hip your hip is a lot about you know what does your hip do for you physically it allows you to obviously sit down and stand up but it also helps you uh stabilize as you're trying as you're moving forward as you're walking right and so whenever i'm looking at the hip i'm looking at something that is you know there also can be that like imbalance uh in in the hip and you go up and down and so she's getting the stabbing pain just above her hip. So I think my guess is, and I'd love to hear from her. So if this is yours, I'll email you anyways um, about the translation, but um, I'd love to hear. But above, right above the hip, I'm guessing that this man is attacking her for something she's moving towards or wanting to move forward to, or perhaps she's trying to leave him, you know, and he is now attacking her. She said it's very intense. So my guess is there's a pretty emotional connection there. So it could be something people can get pretty emotional about their, their jobs and their bosses as well. But my gut would tell me intuitively that that's probably a personal relationship for her. Maybe she's trying to leave. Uh, and so this is getting very emotionally intense. And then when she turns to the left, she's fine. So that's telling me that she knows what she knows and what she knows is she needs to move forward and whether or not he's attacking her or not she needs to move forward right she's turning to left so seeing her own perspective is not painful the path she's trying to take the move she's trying to make is not painful it's safe it's good but whoever this guy is not so great and again i always say please go to the doctor please get a good medical diagnosis please have imaging done please do all of those things all of those things are great and amazing and good and it gives you so much information about knowing exactly what's going on so i'm delighted she's gone to the doctor she said she's had imaging there's nothing wrong she's been to the chiropractor she adjusts it and it's okay 
but it's coming back. So the fact that it keeps coming back is telling me that she's still in this individual relationship where she's unfurling this individual relationship with this guy. And she's still sort of stuck there a little bit. He's still attacking her. And she said it's been going on for about six weeks now. So my guess is that whatever she's been dealing with, however, she's trying to move forward here, um, happened about eight weeks ago. So my gut instinct is she's told this man something about some direction she wants to move, whether it's away from him or just towards a goal or away from a job or something like that. Uh, and he feels really threatened by that and very intensely threatened since the pain is so stabbing and so intense. And he's attacking her and trying to get her off balance and unable to move forward. Um, so I believe that's what's going on there. Um, I will email this individual as well as this, this woman and let her know that, that I did this translation for her. So for those of you that are um, doing live cast and maybe you have a question and you just don't wanna, you're a little worried about asking it yet, please go ahead and feel free to send me your question. If I can, I will answer it here. I will be doing a new episode live every Thursday at 11 Mountain Time. So uh, that's Denver, Colorado time. I want to thank all of you that are here actually in the Zoom with me as well. And I'm very happy to see um, a couple of names that I recognize here. So thank you so much for being here. Um, but do feel free if you are just feeling a little bit shy and, you know, want to send a question but don't want to actually, um, you know, even ask on in this forum, you can do so sending it to Tara at TaraMeyerRobson.com. If you're ready to get additional sort of bespoke customized help from me, and on a weekly basis and have the opportunity to have private sessions with me as well as to fully be able to translate uh, anything that you've got going on and then have a completely customized action plan that's set for you, um, you are able to go ahead and connect at tarameyerrobson.com front slash body dash language. And you can jump in and join the other members, wonderful supportive members of my body language course. You get two opportunities to have a live call with me as well as um, two different opportunities to have private sessions with me where I can translate anything going on with you and then help you develop a really personalized action plan to heal. I wanna thank you so much for being here. If you loved this episode, please hit like and subscribe or follow me on my Facebook page. I am always happy to help people. And until next time, um, have peace, healing, and everything wonderful in your life. I'll see you again really soon.